Hello and welcome everyone. And thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Caitlin Woods and I'm a project agent for the Rescue CBDC's Hive for Talent project in Campbellton, New Brunswick. And I'm joining you today from the traditional ancestral unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq First Nations on which we are learning and working. Join with me is Marco Pasca, an award-winning entrepreneur, accessibility consultant, and an inspirational speaker with Cerebral Palsy. And as an accessibility and inclusion consultant, he has worked with many business leaders who are champions for more accessible, inclusive workplaces. So without getting into too much detail, Marco and I will be discussing why employers should learn about inclusive job postings. And I also wanna thank you, Marco, for taking the time out of your busy schedule to chat with us today about these topics that are so important for the future of businesses. So without further ado, let's get started. So my first question for you, Marco, is why yep. should employers consider creating inclusive job descriptions? Yeah, absolutely. So I actually think I want to expand on this, not just for the job descriptions, but also job postings as a whole. Uh, first and foremost, I think it's a no brainer. We touched on this at the last Q&A period from last month's webinar, uh, but creating inclusive job postings just opens up your uh, recruitment process to a whole wide variety of individuals and in many cases untapped individuals like myself from the disability community. So what do we mean by inclusive job postings? Well that's not just your typical job posting um, that is in maybe a third party piece of software that you don't have control over whether or not it is legible to things like screen readers and things of that nature. The number one issue I've come across with working with employers is they say, well, we don't get a lot of candidates with disabilities applying for our roles. Well, my question to them is, how the heck do you know that? <laughs> you know, there are invisible disabilities, but also you may be getting feedback or emails directly to your organization's website saying, well, I wanted to apply, but I couldn't because I'm somebody with vision loss and I use screen reading technology to, to apply for these jobs. And when I went to your website, the third party site it redirected me to, I wasn't able to tab through um, the application, meaning they hit the tab button on their keyboard and they're able to have the headings or descriptions of the application read out to them in real time. And so I would urge everyone to look at your recruitment process, look at the postings themselves. Are you opening yourselves up to a wide variety of candidates by ensuring that your job postings are inclusive and accessible to things like screen readers? Is it possible that candidates could potentially email your organization for an alternative format of your application process? So if you are fixed to an embedded website that you have a deal with or an agreement with, is there a way to provide a PDF format of that same application to send to somebody so that they can zoom in and zoom out or even make sure that that application itself, that PDF is accessible um, so that a wide range of individuals can access that. It's, I think, really, really important to remember, especially now that we're working more remotely, um, that people are going to find working in your organization in different ways. And the way in which you set yourself up for success is to ensure that by any medium necessary, whether you're using a third party platform like Indeed or another platform, check out and make sure that they do have accessibility front of mind. Uh, now that you can work with candidates across the country, not just within your own province, but perhaps you are in New Brunswick and you could hire a really great uh, uh, graphics designer in British Columbia. I mean, what's to say that you couldn't, right? Um, they could do the work remotely and they could sign whatever NDAs, um, but be very clear about what is going to be expected of them in those job descriptions and set the tone right away uh, by ensuring that those job descriptions indicate obviously that yes, you're inclusive of all individuals, regardless of race, disability, background, all those things that you're normally used to seeing, but the proof is in the pudding. And that's gonna be whether or not that application can be viewed by a number of people in a number of different mediums. I even have some employers who have a large text version of their job applications um, that is in say a larger print, maybe 18 point font, for example, um, because somebody may not be able to read the standard small print. So it's these little details, I think, Caitlin, that go a long, long way when it comes to the postings themselves. But we can get into uh, inclusive job descriptions as well, because that's a whole other bag of tricks. <laughs> 
Yeah, I think that's great. And I think it's great that you brought up those points because a lot of people maybe don't think of those little things that they could do uh, to make a job description a lot more accessible for everyone. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's the thing too, right? Um, these these tips that we're going to give every every month in this webinar series, this is not intended to be something super difficult. Um, we may have some viewers today who already are familiar with the resources on hireforTalent.ca, um, and that's okay. My goal is to dive <clears throat> a little bit deeper into it. I may reiterate some of the things that you've read um, on the toolkits on the website, but the point is, is that people learn in different ways. And sometimes if I'm able to describe to you or explain to you um, you know, verbally exactly what it is to set yourself up for success, um, the better that it will be. Because I know people are having a tough time with retention these days with regards to the pandemic, with regards to everything that we've been going through. And so the more that you can create a recruitment process that not only works for your organization, but is reflective of your corporate culture and the, the type of individuals you want to attract more of within your organization, um, the better it will be for everybody. Yes, exactly. Um, so I guess I'll ask you my second question. Um, sure. What should employers and HR representatives take into consideration when creating an inclusive job description? Okay, perfect. This is great. And I'll be completely honest with you because inclusive job descriptions, um, you may think that your job descriptions are already very descriptive or uh, and inclusive, but I love the way that Hire for Talents toolkit actually breaks this down. So I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of go go through a couple of the points. This is gonna sound like a no brainer to some of you, but I really think that you should uh, take note of this. So first of all, what is the formal job title? Be very very clear about what is in that title. What is going to be expected of the job? What is the supervisor's job title? Sometimes in job descriptions, we don't actually put who is the person going to be reporting to. And for them to know that so that they can, in their cover letters, directly address that supervisor and get an indication as to who they're going to be reporting to directly, um, it, it eases a little bit of the anxiety that is there when you don't necessarily know all the ins and outs of the job that you're really excited and applying for. What is the purpose of the job? So literally indicate your main objectives, the outcome and the intended results. Sometimes we're very vague with job descriptions and we say that, oh yeah, we just want a, a marketing individual uh, with 10 plus years experience. Well, 10 plus years experience in what? I mean, marketing is very broad, so that's not very descriptive. And that gives me to the next piece, which is what are the specific duties or responsibilities? So um, you could list three to eight job duties or responsibilities, but for each of them, list um, which ones are critical and non-critical on the right-hand tab uh, of that page. So on the left-hand tab, you've got a bullet-pointed list of the specific duties, and then on the right side, you've got if it's critical or non-critical, meaning, you know, this is a must for the role when it's critical. And if it's non-critical, it may be routine or occasional, but it's not going to break the bank if you're not completely skilled in that area. Um, so uh, as the toolkit would say on the website, begin each statement with an action verb, okay? Use gender neutral and non-discriminatory language. This is a big one again, be clear, simple and precise language and be specific and write down uh, the details regarding as to where, when, why, and how. Why does this matter? You may get individuals who are applying who are on the autism spectrum. And for a lot of individuals on the autism spectrum, for example, um, they prefer specificity, exactly what in a detailed list is going to be expected of them. So to break it down easily, these are the examples directly from the website. Instead of just saying, we need you to greet visitors as a receptionist, you could say, greet visitors at the office and on the telephone in a professional and friendly manner. That right there describes exactly what's expected of you. You're not just saying greet visitors, you're saying in person, on the phone, and this is what I expect of you. Uh, another example, handle incoming mail. Instead of just handle incoming mail, sort and distribute incoming mail. That really gives an idea as to what is going to be expected of me. I'm expected to sort and, uh, and distribute that mail. 
And, and that's the kind of thing that will really help candidates understand, okay, this is exactly what I'm in for. And of course, prior to all of this, you have an opportunity to indicate if the person is successful in getting an interview. And I believe um, inclusive interviews is the next webinar that we're doing next month. Um, but you have a real opportunity to, in that email that you're sending out to the individuals, um, within the, uh, after the job posting of letting them know exactly what's to be expected. And I'm going to get a little bit more into that next month, but you can see here that it's very simple to start laying out these details and understand that the types of statements we used to make, like must be able to lift 10 pounds. Uh, I think we maybe talked about this last month, but what does lifting 10 pounds have to do with a marketing job? Um, and do you have to say things like must have a valid driver's license? Well, maybe if you're part of a trucking company, you do need a valid driver's license and it's a specific kind of driver's license. But if you don't require driving specifically, then why not be able to say that must be able to travel from Surrey to Vancouver on a regular basis type of thing. So that way, if the individual is a transit user, they can really decide what is gonna take for them to prepare their day in order to make sure that they're able to be at the job site and a secondary location at a specific time every single day, whether that's by car, taxi, bus, or whatever it may take, right? Yeah, and that's great. And I think it's great that you brought that up because I mean, of course, that'll benefit somebody with a disability, but I think it benefits everybody. When you apply for a job, you want to know specifically what, you know, the job description is. So just being a little more descriptive in a job description can benefit everybody. Go figure, right? And that's the thing too is this is not um, like an affirmative action type of webinar series that we're doing and saying specifically people with disabilities. Yes, our goal is that you hire more people with disabilities, but by creating more inclusive hiring practices overall, as you just said, Caitlin, you're actually opening up and becoming way more inclusive to people across the spectrum, whether they identify as having a disability or not. I don't know about you, but as somebody with anxiety, I have to tell you that knowing exactly what's expected of me because I'm such an obsessive planner when it comes to I have this interview or I've got this thing I got to go to. I will look it up on Google Maps a day before, a week before. I will even sometimes go to the location and scope it out, right? So what's to say that people don't want to do that when it comes to the jobs that are expected of them? Maybe there's a way in which on your website, you can describe some of the roles within your organization and how they're currently being utilized by the people that are in those positions. So that if you need multiple people that are doing administration work, you have a description there on your website or even via social media that's playful, but lets people know what your culture is like within your organization and what's to be expected of that. That could be done in any medium, whether it's uh, you know a graphic image that you attach to a, a tweet or something like this, or a short video of just explaining, hey, here's a day in the life of X position within my organization. And you make fun and playful videos. You know who's really good at that? The Vancouver airport is amazing at hilarious videos when it comes to um, the ways in which they want to promote certain initiatives that they're doing. And so I would encourage everyone Find your fit. Find what makes sense to you as an organization. Are you a fun, lighthearted organization? Are you more professional and serious? It doesn't matter which one you are, but know that. Know the DNA of your organization so that you can be reflective of that in your job descriptions, in your job postings, and that way you're going to attract more candidates that reflect that same type of energy. Exactly. I don't know how many jobs that I've applied on that after reading the description, I wasn't 100% sure of what I was actually applying for. So That's I mean, right. just being a little more description, like I said, it could benefit like a wide range, everybody, um, and not just people with disabilities, it would make it easier to, to dip into all these different talent pools when hiring. When hiring. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. For sure. So yeah, that's very important. And um, I think that more and more people should just 
think that it's not about reinventing the wheel. It's not about creating an entirely separate process for people with disabilities and then people who don't identify with disabilities. Forget that. The whole thing here, the less that we can compartmentalize people by specific labels, the better. Um, it's about them becoming a part of your team, not necessarily having to step outside of themselves and their own abilities to form themselves or morph themselves into you. But is your organization already a good fit for the type of person that they are? And how can you, through that job description and through that posting, indicate the exact kind of individuals that you're looking for so that it's a win for everybody? Because remember, you might be recruiting people with disabilities specifically, you might be looking for that, or you might just want to unlock somebody's talent, but they're going to um, kind of put you through a filter too, to ensure that your organization is a good fit for them, just as much as you're going to do that to them as a candidate for, for your organization. Exactly. Um, so I'll jump into my next question, because I do think it is an important one. Um, yeah. So where can employers and HR representatives find more information to help them in getting started? Well, this might sound like a plug and, you know, in some ways that it is, but hireforTalent.ca has an incredible amount of toolkits and resources. And I'm not just saying that, you know, the examples that I gave today um, is actually under the toolkit for how to create an inclusive uh, job uh, posting and description, right? So um, those are two separate tools there. And I believe you can correct me if I'm wrong, Caitlin, but I believe there's even a template um, that you can download from hireforTalent.ca that has exactly what I just described. I believe it's even in a Word document. So you yes, can literally... Yeah. There, oh, there you go. So you can download this and you can apply what I just described to everybody to your exact job postings. You can always put your personality, your mix, your logo, any acknowledgement statements that you want on the job description um, and any indication of non-discriminatory practices um, that you would normally put in your job postings. But consider going the route of critical and non-critical descriptions. I find it extremely useful to be able to just scan my eyes down a job description and go, yep, yep, yep. I've got all the critical things that are required of me. Let's see, what is the non-critical things? You know what? I still think I could tick off the boxes for those non-critical things, but at least they know what they're in for there. So yes, hireforTalent.ca, check out the toolkits. I, I mentioned this last time, I'm gonna mention it again. Um, I was very honored that Hire for Talent asked me to create some up and coming toolkits that we're going to have uh, with regards to accommodation of people with disabilities, working with disability service groups, um, and a bunch of other practices as well. So I have four toolkits um, that I helped to develop that are going to be up on the website uh, soon as well. But the existing toolkits that are there, it lays it out simply. Not only do we have it on the website as an HTML page that you can just read and, and is accessible, but there's also downloadable PDFs of everything we just described. That's a little bit more summarized um, in, in a summarized format that you can download for free. So absolutely check out the website. Okay, so I think we're about at our 20 minute mark. Um, it goes so fast. <laughs> it goes really fast. So thank you so much for sharing your experience on this topic. We are going to have another three series um, in this five-part series that we're going to be able to break down different processes. As I mentioned earlier, the next one is creating inclusive interview environments, which I'm also very excited to talk about because I love the interview process and, and kind of getting the most out of people. Um, and yeah, we're going to be breaking it down in that way. So I don't know if we should keep the other ones a secret or, or special for now. Um, but yeah, we're trying to cover as much as we can in little 20 minute conversations that everybody can walk away with feeling better about. So thank you so much, Caitlin, for the time. Thanks to Hire for Talent for asking me to come back. And uh, I really appreciate this. Yes. And if anyone thinks of any questions after, uh, please feel free to send it to info at hireforTalent.ca and we would happy to be get to get back to you. Uh, Marco, thank you so much for your time and for sharing your insight. I know I've taken away some great info and I'm sure that those attended would agree. And a huge thank you to our attendees for joining us today and be sure to tune in on March 15th at 3 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time where Marco and I will discuss inclusive job postings. Um, I put the Eventbrite link in the chat, and if you need it again, visit our website. It'll be there. Uh, follow us on Facebook. It'll be there as well. And again, thank you all for attending today.
Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And just to just to clarify, it's inclusive interviews. I think you said postings. It's going to be inclusive yeah. interviews. So yeah. just to just to just to clarify for everybody. Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank, yeah, no problem. So thanks so much. We'll catch you next month, and uh, I look forward to any comments or feedback as we get them. Perfect. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. Bye bye.